Hey guys, welcome to a brand new anatomy tutorial. Today we'll be talking about the joint classifications of the articular system. And joints can be classified in two ways. Firstly, they can be classified as or by structure. So this is according to the material that connects the joints. So ligaments or tendons or whatever. And function is according to the amount of movement occurring at the joint. So you might wonder like why is it important to study this? Why do I need to know both? And it's important because structure affects the function and joints are what allow the human body to move. Our bodies were made to move. Obviously there are some joints that don't move very much, but for the most part, um, your limbs were made to, to move so that you can do things, so that you can run, walk, or whatever. And also, you need to know um, structure and function to kind of be able to see the whole picture of the articular system. So, we'll first start off by talking about the structure. And these structure can be broken up into three different types. The first, you can have fibrous joints. And these are joints that are held tightly together by thin fibrous connective tissue. And so within fibrous joints, you can have a couple of types. First are sutures. So these are going to be in the skull. They occur between the flat bones of the skull. So like your sagittal bone, frontal bone, parietal bone. So if you ever looked at a skull, you can actually see these, but the sutures will kind of look like a thin, squiggly line almost. And that's where, a suture means like a sewing together. And that literally is where the two bones are kind of sewn together there. And so in a baby, they're actually called um, fontanelles. They're more commonly known as soft spots, maybe. You might have heard of, of them as that before. But they're called fontanelles. And these just allow like a slight amount of movement of the cranial bones um, in a baby. They eventually fuse as the baby uh, grows up and gets older. And there's four types of fontanelles. There's the anterior or frontal, posterior, or occipital, and then anterior lateral, and the posterior lateral. or mastoid. So these fuse at different times throughout the baby's life. The anterior will usually close about 18 to 24 months after birth, whereas the posterior closes about two months after birth. Anterior lateral will close around three months, and posterior lateral will close around 
12 months. Um, an easy question, a test question you could be asked is like, put the fontanelles in chronologic, chronological order that they close in, or you know which one closes around 20 months. Um, pretty straightforward. The next type of fibrous uh, joints you can have are syndesmosis. So these will be um, joints where the, bound, the bones are bound together by um, pretty long fibers of connective tissue or ligament. So an example in the body would be um, your inferior tibiofibular articulation. Another one would be your inferior radio ulnar articulation. Uh, the third type of fibrous joints are um, gomphosis. And these will be your teeth joints, basically. Um, so this is where the roots of the teeth articulate with your mandible and maxilla via the periodontal ligament. So, yeah, that's just basically your tooth socket, pretty much. Okay. Your next type are cartilaginous. So these will be joints that are fastened together by hyaline cartilage or fibrocartilage. And there's two types of these. The first is synchondrosis. And you can break down the words into their Greek roots um, to kind of figure out what it means. So sin means together, chondros means cartilage. Again, for syndesmosis, sin means together, desmos means bands or ligaments. So you can kind of figure out the name or from the name what it does or what it means. So that's a pretty easy way to help you remember it. So, synchondrosis, these are where bones are bound together by um, hyaline cartilage. Um, they're usually t temporary because these joints um, disappear or become permanent as you age. So, an example is the uh, epiphyseal plate. So obviously you don't grow forever throughout your whole life. You stop growing at some point. And so while you're growing, this is a synchondrosis joint, um, but it's temporary and it seals up once uh, you stop growing. You also find these, like a permanent synchondrosis occurs between your sternum and the first rib. Um, costal cartilage unites the ribs to the sternum. So, yeah. The other type of cartilaginous uh, joints are symphysis. And these are where 
the articular surface of the bone is covered by a thin layer of hyaline cartilage. Um, a good example of this, easy to remember, is the pubis synthesis. It has the name in it, but this is that's just at your pelvis. A little, it's just a little bit of uh, hyaline cartilage in between the two os coxa it connects them with the pubis, and that kind of can move a little bit. Right, a third way that joints can be classified by structure is synovial joints. And these are the most common types of joints within your body. Because again, in your body is made to move. Uh, most of the articulations within your body are where bones move. So they're the most common, they're also the most complex, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, so now joints can be classified on the basis of function. So firstly they can, there's three types again, um, they can be called synarthrodial. Joints, and again break that up, sin together, arthro joint. So together, because they are going to be immovable. These joints don't really move a whole lot, and so we'll have. Fibrous joints are synarthrodial, and within fibrous joints, the fibrous joints that are synarthrodial are sutures and gomphosis. So again, if you think about it, sutures in your skull, you don't want your skull moving around a whole lot, and your teeth, you don't want your teeth to be moving around a whole lot either. So those are, they kind of just make sense logically like where they should be. Also within cartilaginous um, the synchondrosis ones are immovable. So again those were um, the ones that were kind of temporary like the uh, epiphyseal plate, so that eventually disappears and seals up. Um, the next is amphiarthrodial. And again, you can tell what this will mean just by breaking it up. Amphi kind of means both on both sides arthro joint, so these will be kind of, you know, on both sides, so it'll be slightly movable. They can move a little bit. Not a whole lot, but there's some movement there. And again, within fibrous, we'll get uh, syndesmosis. So these ones, your inferior tibiofibular articulation, can move a little bit, not a whole lot, but you can still move some, more than synarthrodial joints at least. And within cartilaginous, uh, we have uh, synthesis. So again, an easy one to remember is the pubis synthesis. And I believe in women, when they're going through childbirth, that can actually stretch quite a bit. Um, so again, those, you know, they have the capacity to move a little bit. It doesn't mean that they always do a whole lot, but they certainly move more than your teeth would or your cranial sutures or anything like that. Uh, 
of the last type is diarthrodial. And these are freely movable. So these are, again, um, going to be the most common in your body because synovial joints are diarthrodial. And they're the most common because your body is made to move. And they're also pretty complex. And so you have three types of synovial joints. The first is uniaxial. So that's going to be uni one axial within one plane. So those joints can move in one plane only. So you can have either a hinge joint here or a pivot joint. The next type is biaxial. And again, that will allow movement in two planes. And you can either have a gliding joint, a condyloid joint, or a saddle joint. Um, third type of synovial joints are triaxial, or sometimes multiaxial. And these permit permit movement in three planes, and there's only one type, it's ball and socket, and there's only two examples of that in your body, that's the hip and shoulder. So I hope this video helped clear up kind of the confusion within joint classifications of the articular system. It's kind of easy to get everything mixed up, you know, you have synchondrosis, Syndesmosis, you know, um, words kind of sound similar, and all of the structure types are types of the functional types, and so it's kind of hard to keep those straight. But if you just think about it carefully, you can kind of reason out what they are. You know, if you just think, okay, what kind of things in my body are not going to move a whole lot? Um, your teeth aren't going to move a whole lot. And your skull's not going to move a whole lot. So, if you just, um, if you get test questions where you're not completely sure, don't panic. You can just reason it out, usually, and you can um, get a pretty good idea if you can't quite remember. But again, it's very important to understand the structure because that will have a huge impact on what its function can be. So I hope this video was helpful and thanks for watching.